Here we are, video three for class for November 4th for Science 121 here at Luther College. I'm Jeff Wilkerson, and we're talking about stellar evolution. This is going to be a very quick overview of post-main sequence evolution. And so we're going to be looking at um, how stars evolve after they leave the main sequence, but we'll talk more about this in the next class. So we're just going to give a really broad quick overview of this. Um, what we've seen so far is that high mass stars uh, evolve much more quickly onto the main sequence and they evolve much more quickly through and off the main sequence and that's going to follow here. High mass stars go through the higher the mass, the faster the star goes through every stage of evolution of its life. And there are various slides um, in there that, 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 that can show you this in, in the PowerPoint. Um, uh, the, we're actually looking at the slides 15 and 16 is all that we're looking at in this uh, segment where we're talking about post-main sequence evolution. And so what happens when a star fuses all the hydrogen into helium in its core? And so what happens here, we're going to draw an HR diagram. Temperature increasing that way, luminosity increasing up this way. And so a star that, that's on the main sequence here, let's just pick a star right here on the main sequence. And so it's on the main sequence and it has fused all of its hydrogen into helium. What's going to happen is if the, if the fusion energy production stops in the core, the core is going to start to try to cool down and it's going to contract. And as it contracts, it heats up. That's, what, that's the story we've been telling all along, is things that fall inward under the influence of gravity get hotter. As it heats up, it can get hot enough on its surface that it ignites a thin shell of fusion here. And that thin shell of fusion is hydrogen into helium fusion in, in a shell around a largely helium inert core. And so it's making hydrogen and helium, and that helium's precipitating out. It's heavier than the hydrogen. It'll fall out onto the top of the core down here and heat up this core. And so as it heats up this core, um, it will uh, the, the, the shell will move out through the star just a little bit uh, as, the, as the temperature gets higher and pushes outward. What happens to the star as it's undergoing shell hydrogen fusion is what we're talking about right here. The star climbs the asymptotic branch. And so the, 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 uh, no, the giant branch, not the asymptotic giant branch. That comes in a moment. So the star climbs the giant branch up here. It's a giant star. And as a giant star, uh, red, so these are the red giants that populate the upper right region of the HR diagram that we've seen. So those are stars that are shell fusing hydrogen into helium, um, and they're getting more luminous. They're getting cooler, and they're getting cooler because, as we talked about in the previous video, as the, as the temperature gets higher in the core down here, it causes more pressure and it pushes the outer layer of the star out. And as the outer layer, the envelope of the star expands, it cools down. And so these become red giants because the temperature of the outer layer of the star has gotten very cool. Uh, 3,000 Kelvin of order that uh, often. And so you have this cool red star, but it's very luminous because the core is very hot right here. And it's producing a lot of fusion in this thin shell around here. And as that shell moves outward through the star, um, and the core gets to be hotter because we're precipitating and precipitating and precipitating um, precipitating helium down onto that core. Uh, the luminosity of the star is growing and growing and growing and growing. And what you see in the slide that I've, I've put in the, the PowerPoint, it's just from your book, it's a figure from your book, and that's a, that's a slide for a one solar mass star. So we'll just talk about the one solar mass star. The higher mass stars do something similar, um, but they don't under they don't quite undergo the helium flash that we're about to talk about. So a low mass star undergoes a helium flat flash, and we'll talk very briefly about what the difference with a higher mass star is. And what happens is, so over the next today and, and on Friday, we're going to talk about something called quantum degeneracy, electron degeneracy, okay? And so electron degeneracy is an interesting thing. And so electron degeneracy means the, the sort of, you can think of it as um, the, the fact that you can't have two particles 
in the same quantum state if they're half integer spin particles. Well, this is this has to do with things that are called quantum wave functions for the particles and whether those quantum wave functions are symmetric or anti-symmetric and all of this stuff. Um, and it's related to, any of you who've had chemistry out there, it's related to something called the Pauli exclusion principle in chemistry that says, you, you know, you can't have two electrons in helium in the same state. Uh, you can have two in the ground state of helium because one's spin up and one's spin down. And if you have one spin up and one spin down, they fit in there. But the third electron can't go in because it's got to either be spin up or spin down, and it can't be in that same ground state. It has to go into the next state up. And that's why you have different shells in atoms as you move out is because electrons can't occupy the same quantum space like that. And so electrons can't occupy the same quantum space down in the cores of our stars either. And so when you have a, have a, a core that's very dense, a quantum degeneracy like that can kick in. in. In normal material around here, like the desk here, or the board, or the air, or whatever, uh, we're so far away from quantum degeneracy being important. We just don't even think about it. We don't even care about it. We don't, we don't talk about it because you need to have those electrons pushed really closely, or as we'll talk about on Friday, the neutrons pushed really closely um, so that they, they want to try to occupy that same quantum state. And the quantum states are pushed really closely together, so you, you, just, you just don't see it every day in normal everyday stuff around here. Um, but you do in the cores of stars. And so in a low mass star like this, um, the, the density is high enough and the temperature just low enough that quantum degeneracy is important. And so it, what happens in these stars and in high mass stars later on we'll talk about, um, and we'll talk about that on Friday, is the core can become degenerate. And if the core is degenerate, and when we say degenerate, what we mean is it's being held up by quantum, uh, by, by, by quantum exclusion uh, pressure like that. So this quantum degeneracy pressure. So this degeneracy pressure, it says it, it, they can't get pushed any closer together because if you tried to push them closer together, the wave functions would overlap. They'd be in, they'd be in the same quantum state, and that's not allowed. So, that, so that's what's holding the star up. It's not gas pressure. So what happens is you have this PV equals nRT, and we've said, ah, as the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up. Okay, and so what would happen in a non-degenerate gas in the core of the star is as we fed material down onto this core, the temperature will be rising and rising and rising, and that causes the pressure to rise, and it causes the star to expand back out. Um, and so the pressure of the core expands and it cools down. So there's a limit. You, you, you sort of shut off the temperature rise in the cores of stars that aren't in degenerate. Um, and it, even if this is... Even if this is, is, ga is, is radiation pressure that's holding the star up, PQ, it still has a temperature dependence, okay? So whatever uh, photon pressure or gas pressure holding the star up has a temperature dependence, and as that temperature goes up, the pressure goes up, and as the pressure goes up, it causes the thing to expand, and as we know, when you expand against gravity, if you're massive, you cool down, and so it shuts off. You, you can't get a runaway temperature growth. It tends to want to shut off the temperature growth as, uh, the, as, 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 you, as you heat it up. That doesn't happen in a degenerate star. When we have this quantum degeneracy that we've been talking about, um, it is a temperature-independent pressure. So temperature-independent pressure. And that's absolutely key. It's going to be really key for the supernova explosions that we talk about on Friday, is to say, with the temperature-independent pressure, um, the, 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 you can keep going, the temperature goes up, the pressure doesn't go up. And if the pressure doesn't go up, then it doesn't expand and it doesn't cool back down. And you can just keep the temperature going up and up and up and up and up and up. And in a low mass star here, what happens is that temperature goes up uh, and it suddenly reaches the point, which is about 10 to the eighth Kelvin. So about 100 million Kelvin, it reaches this point where all this helium can start fusing into high, uh, carbon. So the helium fuses into carbon and that's what's marked on your PowerPoint slide as a helium flash. Boom! Uh, the core uh, suddenly fuses helium, and you drop down into this region of the the uh, periodic uh, the, the, the the HR diagram. This region of the HR diagram is called the horizontal branch, and down on the horizontal branch, you're getting most of your energy. Here, you were getting most of your energy from the shell fusion, the fusion of hydrogen into helium in a thin shell around the inert helium core. Here, the inert, the inert helium core is no longer inert, and it's now fusing into carbon. And so this is a helium fusion. Most of your energy is coming from helium fusion into carbon. 
That doesn't last any time at all. That's a real, you don't see many helium fusion stars out there because that's a really short-lived stage of a star's life. And you, you fused all that, uh, that helium into carbon and you get an inert carbon core and a carbon nitrogen oxygen core. And so you get this inert core again very quickly and you start shell fusing again. And so you start shell fusing um, further out um, into the star. And, and, and what actually happens as you, as you climb the asymptotic giant branch, you typically have, so this is the giant branch. Uh, this is the horizontal branch and this is the asymptotic giant branch. We'll just call it AGB right here. It's the asymptotic giant branch. And as you climb the asymptotic giant branch, you typically are getting your energy from two shells primarily. And that's a hydrogen into helium shell and further in helium burning shell into carbon. So you've got, and you've got a layer, but you, you, so, so you've got these two shells um, and you, so you've got one layer that's fusing hydrogen into helium and one layer that's fusing helium into carbon. And, and the star's undergoing these things called thermal pulses. And these, the stars actually sort of one of these shells will be dominant, and then uh, the net, uh, the other shell will become dominant. So if the hydrogen shell, it, it, if you got the hydrogen shell is producing most of the energy, it can make it's making a lot of helium and feeding that helium down into the helium shell. And as it does so, then the helium shell can turn on. And when the helium shell turns on inside it and, and, and sort of has a, a sort of nuclear explosion where it starts fusing, it pushes the outer layer out and cools the hydrogen layer down and shuts the hydrogen layer off. And it's mostly helium shell burning. Doo -doo 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 -doo. But then the helium shell runs out of helium and it shuts off and the star wants to contract back. And when the star contracts back, it heats up and that hydrogen shell turns back on. And the hydrogen shell then burns, 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 burns and feeds the helium shell. And the helium shell gets to the point where it can ignite again and it pushes the outer layer out. And so you've got this cooling and heating and cooling and heating. When you heat, you turn on the hydrogen burning shell and when you cool, uh, you, sure, you turn that off when the outer layer cools uh, because of the helium burning that's burning down in there. So you, you're sort of toggling back and forth between the state where most of your energy is coming from shell helium fusion and most of your uh, uh, energy is coming from shell hydrogen fusion. Now you can have further down inside the helium burning shell, especially as you get up here, for a high mass star, for a star that's much bigger than the a star of the sun, the five solar mass star that we've been talking about, for example, or even bigger, um, you can have other shells beyond helium that are burning, but those are very short-lived, and you're typically not getting an enormous amount of energy from those. And so you're getting, but you can have fusion like an onion. You can have all of these different shells that are fusing and feeding a core down in the middle that is an inert iron nickel core um, that's starting to grow down in the middle of your star. It can look something like this, where you've got, a, there's your hydrogen shell, there's your helium burning shell, and those are the shells that are producing most of the energy, but you have other, sh other shells, and that's depicted in the PowerPoint slide um, that you see uh, of, of these sort of asymptotic giant branch stars in slide 15. So slide 15 and slide 16 is this HR diagram that we've been talking about here uh, right now. So this is what goes on when a star leaves the main sequence. It becomes luminous, much, much, much more luminous. So when the, when the sun becomes a red giant, um, it, it, it's, going, it's going to become much more luminous, 100 times more luminous than it is now. Um, and its radius is going to grow, 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 and, and come out to the point where it's, it's about where the Earth's orbit is right now. So in, in the red giant phase, uh, the sun's surface will reach out to the Earth's orbital position in space. And it will be a very luminous, though the surface will be cool, because that surface will have cooled down in the expansion outward. So it'll be a cool surface, but a very, very luminous star because it's so big. Remember, we go back to the idea that luminosity is proportional to the radius squared temperature of the fourth power. The temperature will have dropped by a factor of two, uh, but the radius will have grown uh, by a factor of 100, maybe. So if the radius goes up by a factor of 100, and the temperature drops by a factor of two, this gives you a 10 to the fourth right there. Uh, this gives you a 16, so 10 to the fourth divided by 10 by a 16 gives you a, a, a sense, uh, these are all rough numbers, but it gives you a sense of what might happen to the, the luminosity of the sun. This is, it's gonna go up by, um, you know, it's gonna go, gonna go up by, by a thousand or more um, in, this, in this rough approximation right here. So anyway, that's what's going on. Uh, the star is hotter in the core, cooler on the surface. Um, and so it, it has all of this, 
uh, all, all of this nuclear fusion going on in different layers, and we're going to talk about what that leads to in uh, class on Friday, so that, um, you know, the last bit of the PowerPoint that you have out there is about variable stars. There are instability bands that, as the star walks through here, it, it passes through various instability bands, and so a number of these stars are variable stars. And we're going to talk very briefly about stellar, the history of our study of stellar variability and what it tells us not only about stellar evolution, but about measuring distances in the universe and so on, and get back to the research project on, that we do on the roof here, uh, here at Luther. Because uh, in that field of view, where we're studying about 1,600 stars for the last 20 years, um, the vast majority, I told you there were five, five systems or so of these eclipsing binaries that were a very short period about to merge into single stars maybe. Um, uh, there are a lot more stars on the asymptotic giant branch. Uh, there are 50 or 60 or 70 stars that we see pulsing in and out, variable stars. And so we want to talk about those just a little bit up here on the asymptotic giant branch. And then we talk about the spectacular things. What happens when all of this is done? Uh, the spectacular endpoints of stars. And so that, that'll be our topic for, for next time. So that's what we got. Uh, three videos that talk about pre-main sequence evolution, main sequence evolution, and post-main sequence evolution. Uh, have a good day, everybody. I'll see half of you in lab tomorrow on Thursday and everybody uh, in class on Friday. Take care.